Well, hello everybody. Phil here from the Blue Envelope channel. I thought I'd make a little video uh, just talking about my thoughts from the uh, annual meeting there last weekend. You know, one of the biggest announcements was not having to turn in an hour report every month for witnesses anymore. I thought that was a really big thing. And it kind of got me thinking, I was curious about whether... Um, Jehovah's Witnesses are maybe moving to kind of the Mormon model of how door-to-door -door preaching is done. In my long list of videos to do, uh, one of the subjects is talking about kind of predicting what Jehovah's Witnesses as a religion will do based on what um, the Mormon Church or the LDS Church has done, because they're a little earlier chronologically, but very similar overall organizations. And there have been a lot of uh, moves that witnesses, whether unintentionally or not, have copied uh, that Mormons have rolled out over the decades. I've kind of puzzled about that before. Um, which model is more effective? How witnesses do the preaching work or how Mormons do the preaching work? So the Mormon model is kind of that um, you sign up to do a mission, and it's 18 months for women and two years for men. And typically, it's usually young folks just shortly after high school, so maybe like 18 to 21 kind of age range. So they sign up, and for those two years, they are going at it hardcore in the ministry, um, 10 to 12 hours a day, five to six days a week. They get one day off each week. Uh, and even that day, they have to do some preaching. So it's a pretty grueling schedule, but it's a it's a defined time period. Like you'll be done after that eighteen months or two years. And basically, after that missionary period, Mormons d ne will never preach again door to door. There is like a senior missionary thing that they can sign up for, kind of for retirees mainly. But I think that's uh, more in the minority folks that do that. Then on the other hand, you've got Jehovah's Witnesses, and Witnesses put in, you know, an average of maybe 10 hours or so a month um, preaching, but they're never released from that obligation. They'll be preaching until the day they die, basically. So you've got this Mormon model, which is kind of like the 100-yard dash, super intense but super short. And then you've got the witness model, which is uh, more like a marathon. So the pace is a lot slower, but it lasts for a lot longer. So I'd be curious, I'd, somebody should crunch the numbers one of these days, like which one do you get more hours out of from your membership and which one is more effective, uh, the short, short and intense or long and steady model. But anyways, now with this um, announcement that publishers in general don't will not turn in um, time anymore other than just checking a box that they did do some sort of service, and then you'll have the second tier of witnesses in full-time service, pioneers and whatnot. Um, it kind of makes me curious if they're slowly kind of starting to roll out, maybe like in stages over several years, shifting to that Mormon model of where you sign up to do a missionary service for a couple of years. And I could see it being a lot of young people after high school because they don't really have a lot of um, responsibilities at that point. Um, and then maybe folks like ones who want men who want to reach out to be uh, ministerial servants or elders, maybe they want to sign up to do this to kind of prove their mettle. And all the preaching would be handled by the folks in this um, service, which I don't know, maybe it would still be called pioneers. Or maybe they'll be known as Nazarites. They seem to be talking about Nazarites a lot in the annual meeting. So I think one of the advantages of uh, if they shifted to that model is that right now when you sign up to start pioneering, it's kind of open-ended as far as the time period. And really the idea is if possible, you'll, you'll pioneer the rest of your life. Um, and there's a little bit of a stigma, I would say, about when you come off the pioneer list, some shame that, uh, that you know, some stigma associated with that. Whereas if it was kind of a defined, closed-ended commitment, a year or two years maybe, I think that would be a lot more appealing because when you finish, hey, you've fulfilled your service commitment and now there's not a stigma about having stopped the pioneering. Now you're going to have, um, you know, congratulation parties for witnesses that, hey, you, you got it done. You, you set out and you did what you said you'd do. Congrats. One question I was thinking, would it be mandatory 
Well, no, I don't think it would. Um, you know, being a Mormon missionary is not required by the Mormon church, but it is one of those things that's not required, but it's kind of uh, highly, highly encouraged uh, to, to do a mission. It's been emphasized to Mormon women that really the only good, the best candidate for a marriage mate would be somebody who is a RM, a return missionary. And I could see that kind of going that way with witnesses too, where maybe eventually it'll be surprising to appoint a man as an elder who hadn't served a mission yet. So as far as the training for this um, type of service, well, in the LDS church, uh, the members who sign up to do a mission, they go to uh, MTC, a missionary training center, and they get several weeks of training. So it can be done in person, but then during COVID, they were also doing Zoom classes um, to get that done. For witnesses, so there's a few different schools for witnesses right now. You've got SKE, uh, which is an eight-week course. Generally, everybody there is already pioneering, and then they want to do more in the organization. And then on the other hand, you've got Pioneer School, which is a six-day course currently for pioneers after, after they've completed their first year of pioneering. So if they do shift to this new arrangement, um, I could see them setting up, you know, you know, kind of merging those schools together and making maybe a two-week school that you do before you start pioneering um, to get some training, especially if over the years uh, preaching for rank-and-file witnesses gets more de-emphasized and people just won't be very good at it anymore. Um, and so they will need some training before they start their uh, Nazarite service or whatever. Now, currently for LDS missionaries, they sign up, but they're, where they're going is assigned by uh, headquarters. And they can be sent anywhere in the world, basically. Um, so for witness pioneers, I'm not sure if that would be the case. Maybe there'd be a box on the application indicating whether they're open to being sent to serve anywhere, but I can imagine for the vast majority, they would just do it in their home congregation, their home turf. And I guess one thing I could see is maybe the hour requirement for this going back up. So they've been dropping their hour requirement over the decades just to get as many people, uh, pioneering as possible. But if it's kind of this specific uh, service, I could see them actually raising the hours back up to uh, get the most out of those two years. Now, the organizational structure is a little different in the LDS church to do with this compared to how the witnesses do it. As we know, in the witnesses, you've got a group of congregations organized into a circuit, and then that is managed by a circuit overseer, and that's a man appointed by headquarters and then assigned to that area for three years, and he lives in the organization housing during that time. In the LDS uh, model, they've got also congregations. They call them wards. And so their group of congregations are organized into a stake, is what they call it, instead of a circuit. And that's overseen by a stake president, who is a person that lives there. He's a local member of the church. And then you've kind of got this separate structure uh, at the same time, which is that all the missionaries in a region are organized into, it's just called a mission, and they're managed by a mission president. And so a mission president is chosen by headquarters and uh, lives in the area for three years, living in housing provided by the church. So we can see that in the witnesses right now, the a circuit overseer kind of fills both those roles since preaching has been so integrated, like all members are preachers for Jehovah's Witnesses currently. But if the, it starts to separate out into these two tiers where the preaching is only done by a select group, um, I, I could see where maybe witnesses would move to that Mormon model where you'd have a local elder kind of handling the organizational side of things for a circuit and then a circuit overseer appointed by, uh, you know, traveling around every three years would manage all the preaching activity for the region, deciding where, what territory the pioneers preach in, um, how they're mobilized out in a given area where they'll be deployed, what kinds of preaching they'll do door to door versus public ministry. So then I got to thinking, well, would it be, uh, you know, an improvement, a net improvement if witnesses shift to this Mormon model of preaching as a missionary? I don't think so. I think it's kind of a lateral move at best. Um, you know, uh, Mormon 
MTCs, training centers, have had issues with uh, instructors sexually preying or abusing teenage uh, girls that are there as students. Um, there's a huge emphasis on metrics and tracking numbers in uh, in the missions, and that can start to be really stressful for missionaries, making sure they're hitting those numbers, those targets each week. Uh, there's a big stigma as far as uh, a missionary who comes home early, uh, which is usually due to mental health kinds of things, but sometimes also physical health problems. Uh, you know, there's one kind of notorious uh, training video shown at the MTCs where a past church leader tells missionaries they would be better off coming home in a coffin than coming home early, not having completed their full mission. So for witnesses, I could see that happening where currently we have that stigma of coming off the pioneer list. There's some shame associated with that. Might just shift to the shame of uh, not completing your service requirement uh, and stopping that early. On the other hand, for generally speaking, for the rank and file, not having to turn in time every month, I think is a huge improvement because that's one of the toughest things about being a witness and uh I don't think there's very many people that like it, like doing it, to be totally honest. I've told folks for years, you think I'm going to miss the door-to-door -door when it's done? Uh-uh. No way. Uh, you know, Jehovah, I just miss the door-to-door. -door. I just love getting screamed at and mistreated. I just don't feel the same without it. Not going to happen. So those are some of the thoughts I've been thinking about. Um, I don't know. I could be way off base and this will never happen. Um, it's hard to picture right now because right now most witnesses are, you, tra you know, trained to be preachers. And a lot of them, I think, are used to doing that. And so they would have a hard time just stopping preaching. Um, so we're it could be that we're in kind of this transitionary period and again, this might be something they're going to roll out in stages over a number of years. And that's why there definitely did seem to be kind of mixed messaging on the annual meeting that on the other hand, you don't have to turn in time anymore and what a relief that is. But they also said you do need to still be super zealous and not slow up in your preaching at all. So it doesn't really mesh too well. Um, I'll be curious to see if maybe in a year or two they phase out that requirement that they currently have that all publishers still need to check a box that, yes, I did do some preaching each month. Maybe that will go away after a while. So, yeah, that's about all I had to say. I'd be curious to see what you guys think about um, how that could play out in the years to come. Anyways, thanks for watching and uh, take care. We'll catch you all in the next video.